Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. What's crazy about sex, specifically, Mm -hmm. is it's a very private act that's being judged so fucking publicly. The fact that we have so much wrapped up of our identity in sex and who we give it to and how we treat it. We do find ourselves, even now, in 2019, thinking, it's okay that I don't love him. It's okay that I don't imagine a future with him. Mm. And yet I'm still having hang up. There's so much to the experience of sex. And we know that there's so many layers. The fact that we've equated virtue with sex, yeah. to me, is already what diminishes sex itself. It's been shoved down our throats so often where you're not a virtuous person. You're not a good person. You're a slut. Men have tended to be sort of patted on the back for their conquests. I do think that there is a level of suffering that occurs as well. Around the Victorian times in the UK, I don't know about the States, but I know about the UK. With the rise of the middle class, there was this rise of kind of evangelical Christianity, which really cemented this idea of women in the home, Mm -hmm. men cannot be controlled, all the really extreme stuff that we've almost internalized now. Mm -hmm. nearly what 200 years later was stuff that was really introduced then you were not allowed to have sexual desires as a woman Mm -hmm. that madonna whore kind of thing you're either a whore or you're a virgin yes you're either chaste or you're a slut there's no in between but it's funny because i'm sitting here now and i'm seeing myself repeating all these societal constructs yes. to myself in order to justify the fact that i don't love this person but i'm attracted to them anyway i hate that society constricts me in a way yeah right but i internalize it So what ends up happening is I end up hating myself. As long as we hold on to the belief system that who we are is defined by our sexual act, but in such a way that by denying ourselves or by delaying gratification, it speaks to our goodness, then I've got issues because the judgment will remain. From the spiritual perspective of the suppression of women, women have sexually been so repressed and forced to suppress their desires. And that Mm. has to do with our creative energy because we possess a level of life force okay and by narrowly defining how women can use that life force has been a way to control women's power when you say life force what do you mean life force is our ability to give life isn't it both men and women together that give life it's biologically, I'm not talking like now in this day and age. No. Yes, but the feminine specifically holds that kind of power because it resides in their second chakra. It doesn't Which one's the, I thought the second chakra was the throat. No. Oh, it works down it up. Works, yes, exactly. Ah! <laughs> okay, so sacral is the second. Precisely. Okay, fine. Because we hold the ability to grow life. From create life. Create yes. life. Mm-hmm. We have life force. Yes. I guess that's also quite interesting because what just popped into my head is this idea that if you control who a woman sleeps with, you know who the baby daddy is. Because <laughs> there's never a question as to who the mother is. Can, there can always be a question as to who the father is. So maybe one of the reasons why societally they try to really restrict how and when a woman could have sex mm-hmm. was, was the paternity. Was the paternity. Mm-hmm. It was also to, it's kind of ownership. It's another way of ownership. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it all comes down to ownership. Yeah. But we have been complicit in that story. I yeah. mean, how many women go around judging other women? I remember being judged as well. I remember being judged and judging. But I have to say, and this is going to sound, I guess it's just part of owning your shadow stuff. When I was judging other women, there was a big part where I was jealous that they could and I wasn't being able yeah. to. Because they were in their power. They um, were exercising their choice when we are reserving our sexuality yes yeah. when we're sort of boxing it up and we're yeah. saying well i'm only going to do it with one person my entire life and it's going to yeah. be so special we're limiting that experience and so our ability to know ourselves and connect to ourselves is limited to that experience with that one person so our growth and our maturity then gets wrapped up in that one relationship that we, we can't distinguish what are our desires and our needs in relationship to the other person. We don't give ourselves the opportunity to grow and learn from other people, learn new experiences. Exactly, which teaches us about ourselves. Not just our sexual limits or boundaries or not, if we choose to not have them, but about who we are in relationship to another person. For a long time, 
I'd say sex for me was definitely about pleasing the other person. Mm -hmm. My body was, it was just another mirror of my self-worth, really. Yes. And even though I enjoyed it, the enjoyment I got was that someone else was enjoying me, if Mm -hmm. that made sense. Mm -hmm. As my maturity has grown, definitely the next step was it being actually the other way around. One of my best friends was like, it's not all about you. I'm actually getting a bit concerned for this dude kind of thing. (laughs) And I was like, don't worry, he's going to end up ghosting me. We'll be fine. Um, We'll call it even. Yeah, it'll be even somewhere. To be in my own body with someone else. But really, it was quite a selfish experience. Yeah. More recently, it's definitely been about two people enjoying each other. So I can definitely see a parallel growth between how I'm seeing the world and how I'm treating my body and how I'm treating... And it's also so natural to feel desire, to want to have sex, to want to connect to somebody else, Mm. to want to experience satisfaction, Mm. gratification, mind-blowing orgasm. That's why orgasms feel good, because you're meant to be doing it. There is certainly something very divine about the orgasmic experience, yeah? I mean, that's how... It's that Nine Inch Nails song... You bring me closer to God. It is yeah. all about that. And you could elevate it to something sacred, but it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And when we start to really bring God into the discussion, we start bringing religion and codes and commandments and it messes it up. It distorts it. And that's what creates that dysfunction. It connects you to your own body. Because mm-hmm. remember, I remember you were telling me about how for a lot of people, mind, body, spirit, all your different bodies, your physical body, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it can be quite disconnected. Yes, very much. Sex is one of those things that actually in orgasm Mm -hmm. brings them all together very much so actually it it reconnects you to you completely and what's funny is that that reconnection to you weirdly we've been socialized i think it then disconnects you from society you become ostracized for reconnecting to yourself isn't that ironic and that in order to be a part of society in order to belong you must deny yourself goes back to one of our previous podcasts where we were talking about love being suffering where we're taught that in order to love in order to show love in order to be good to other people you sacrifice yourself and sex is just another one of those things very much and denying our sex completely denying our connection all the words we use to describe sex Mm -hmm. are words to chastise you absolutely you're naughty sex is dirty sex is dirty sex is naughty sex is bad you've been a bad boy i've been a bad i need to be Mm -hmm. punished Mm -hmm. to have sex you need to be fallen yeah and no one wants to be fallen they want to be virginal Mm -hmm. and that's why i struggle with virginity and virgin stories yeah well it is our first time in this lifetime yeah certainly not our first time ever if we consider all of our past lifetimes (laughs) but also i don't remember having you know i don't tell the romantic story of how it was when i first ate food (laughs) when i took my first nap (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? The only difference between losing your virginity is you just do it a bit older. But actually, it's just the first of one hopes many instances of something yes. very normal yes. that you will continue doing. Absolutely, because it's become so built up. And because it's become so built up emotionally, it, for many, it becomes this very damaging story because you feel like you've got to really love this person. And when you're a teenager, for those of us who went there, you're not necessarily thinking, I'm going to be with this person forever. I knew it wasn't yeah. that case. And I think I even just wanted to convince myself, though, that I did love him to justify it. But I also had friends who had had sex with their high school boyfriends. The fallout from those relationships were so undesirable that their sexual connection to them made the heartbreak even worse. We're having an opposite dysfunction as well, where sex has become just as meaningless as taking the tube. And that is just as toxic. It becomes so cheap that it becomes meaningless. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what we're really struggling with at the moment, is Mm -hmm. this balance. I think it's whatever you it has for you. As long as you recognize that is an expression of where you are at. Okay, explain. And your maturity. Okay, explain. Your consciousness. Okay. So I've always said that how we are, what we say, what we do is an expression of our own consciousness. Our sexual behavior yeah. is very much an expression of our pain, yeah. our trauma. I definitely get that. I think what makes sex special is the power that connection brings. It's connecting to life force. And that's what makes it really special. Because it's connecting to you and it's connecting to the other person. And it's you and that person or you mm-hmm. and yourself. Yeah. Or, you know. yeah. But I'm also talking about your power as a spiritual being. 
Okay. When you connect to your desires that mm-hmm. powerfully, that strongly, and you connect to life force, you connect to manifestation because that's co-creative power. Yes. So when you are fully in your body and you are having great sex, may not be satisfying every time. So what you're saying is basically like desire, connecting to that desire, connecting to someone else. It makes you feel alive. And that's why sometimes we often confuse love for that dopamine brain response we get when we have sex and that's why when you ask before about how long does one wait to have sex and i said well three months is not a hard and fast rule it's just a guideline but part of that is because you really want to make sure that when you say goodbye later that evening or in the morning or two days later that you're very clear about what your and the other's intentions were just lust is it something else Because that's often the disappointment people experience. I knew I was so clear that I really wanted to have sex because I was ready for that. I was ready to own my body. I really wanted to take all that to the next level Mm -hmm. for myself. So that whatever happened, Mm -hmm. it was all my decision. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, well, I'm doing this because I want to show this person how I'm feeling. And this is an expression of what I think of them. And I don't want to take away from the other side of it. It is an exercise in vulnerability. It holds a lot of meaning, yeah. but it's how much you, it's your choice in what meaning you, you ascribe to it. It's not to say that it should always be meaningless. Mm. I think that sex is one of the most meaningful things we can do. But I think right now, especially as an early episode, our goal is to untangle sex from judgment. But then we also did call this love and sex. (laughs) Well, I think the reason why we called it love and sex Mm -hmm. is because that is the judgment. The love is the judgment of the sex. Mm -hmm. It needs to be there, what it looks like, how they feel, how you feel. And then obviously the absence of that love is the absence of self-love. I love my body. This is just something fun. I am attracted to this person. I have a connection to this person. I'm not sleeping with them to numb. I'm not sleeping with them for them. I'm not sleeping with them for any reason that's negative. I'm doing it because I want to Mm -hmm. and it's fun and I like this, then that's okay because I'm not going to be on my deathbed going, oh, I wish I had less sex. (laughs) Pretty sure that's not a thing. The point of this, and I think it's really important, is to say sex is so much tied up in judgment. Yes, we've kind of explained why. We've kind of explained why it's to our detriment that it's Mm -hmm. tied up in judgment. Have we talked about how to untie it. Oh, have compassion. It sounds easier and simpler than it really is. What is lacking in most of our thoughts and our hearts is compassion and understanding where that person is and why they do what they do. And then respecting and honoring that choice. It comes from a place of pain or a place of joy. I certainly started my sexual life from a place of joy. I was very happy. I don't know why. I just felt ready. But the more hurt I became, the more I used sex to hide or for validation. And it's funny because I started my relationship with sex from a place of more pain and it's definitely gone into joy. Yeah. It's definitely gone the other way. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. And I think the worst thing you want to be doing if you're going to be having sex is be judging yourself at the time for having sex and then being scared of judgment from other people afterwards Mm -hmm. because you might not do it. That's not very fun. It's good to be in a place where you can enjoy it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And that's what you mean by compassion is just... It is what it is, and it's okay, and it's good. And that's, I guess, how you start having a healthy relationship with sex, because effectively a healthy relationship with sex is a healthy relationship with yourself, because sex is sharing yourself. So you have to have a good relationship to yourself before you're able to share it. And it's key that you're saying you share it. You don't give it away. You're not giving it up. You're not surrendering, which... As we, as we know, religion is all about that. You know, you're giving up your virginity. You're yeah. giving, it's you're giving yourself. Task. It it's, is very. Yeah. Instead of sharing, which is two people just having fun with each other, mm-hmm. enjoying each other, either as an expression of love or an expression of lust, mm-hmm. you know, an expression of pleasure. Mutual desire. That's what it should be about. Mm-hmm. And so if you want to have a positive experience in that way, and you're both sharing a part of yourself with the other person, then you kind of need to be okay with yourself and they need to be okay with themselves first too. Because if not, you will find slightly dysfunctional... Or greatly dysfunctional. Or greatly dysfunctional experiences. <laughs> and I've had greatly dysfunctional experiences. I wasn't great. And as we know, relationships are a mirror, so the other person wasn't great as well. When we came together, it was even more toxic. 
And we were both trying to fix something by coming together. But in fact, it was just driving us further apart. But I do think if you want to have sex, do it. Please. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The world will be a much more joyful place if there were more people having sex and healthy sex and not feeling guilty or shame around it. When you're in that moment and you're enjoying it and your body is connected to your mind and your senses and Mm -hmm. you can't really replicate that. Why should I allow some societal constructs of my gender to take that away from me? As long as it's safe, as long as I'm respecting myself and the other person, Mm -hmm. it's the big fucking deal. Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.